Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk uh, doing another Construct 2 tutorial. Last lesson we got up to being able to move the um, aircraft around, pressing spacebar to shoot, and we inserted a text box or just a label actually with uh, some instructions and we've got the background as purple and we've got some different layers happening so the plane is on top of the background the words are on top of the plane and so on so what I want to do is firstly you might have discovered that the words stay on the screen for a long time right? I don't want it to stay there forever so there are a couple of ways you can do this uh, the first thing is I want to make it so that the words only come up um, for a very short amount of time so let's say five seconds okay so firstly I want to create what's called an instance variable so an instance variable is when you have an object selected an instance variable is a variable that is attached to this object okay so that means if you have another object you can have a variable with another object and that variable is different to the variable in this object so the variable I'm going to have attached to this object is I'm going to call it uh, on screen and it basically tells you whether you can see it on the screen and initially it is on screen so the on screen variable the on screen variable of the instructions object is originally one. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the event sheet and I'm going to add an event and I'm going to say uh, when the instructions variable has an instance variable on screen equal to one meaning that the instructions variable the instructions label is displaying on the screen I'm going to add an event and I'm going to add a system object and I'm going to add um, every five seconds every five seconds okay so I'm going to put this event with the instructions event so when the instructions are on the screen and every five seconds I'm going to conduct an action what am I going to conduct I'm going to make the instructions label uh, make it disappear I'm going to make it disappear so we're changing the visible variable to invisible okay so when the instructions variable is one every five seconds I'm gonna do that and I'm going to make the uh, on-screen variable to zero so what that means is initially the on-screen variable is equal to one initially and after about five seconds I'm gonna set it to invisible I'm gonna set the on-screen variable to zero so that these act these actions won't occur again won't be executed again because the on-screen variable is zero now and it's not one anymore so it's not gonna pass the test to execute these conditions uh, another thing I wanna make sure uh, actually let's just see if it works first so five seconds it should disappear <clears throat> All right another thing I want to make sure is actually I'm gonna do that a little bit later okay so now I want to go to layout one and I want to insert some enemies so let's lock the information layer and let's edit the gameplay layer now go to right click insert new objects 
Let's insert a sprite to represent the enemy. Click somewhere on the screen. And I'm going to open up a sprite. So go back to Space Shooter, open up Meteors, and just open up the first one on the top left, a meteoroid. Uh, close this window. Okay, so for Sprite 3, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to rename it as a meteoroid. How do you spell it? A meteoroid. Okay, so the meteoroid is on the screen, and what I want to do is I want to start moving it around like a bullet. So under the behaviors for the meteoroid, you can insert, you can add new uh, behavior, and I want it to move around like a meteoroid, uh, sorry, like a bullet, so you can just choose the bullet, uh, bullets, um, movement so click add and then now you'll see that when you play the game the media keeps going and it moves off the screen so that's not very convenient so what I want to do is I want to make the meteoroid bounce off the edge of the screen okay so I'm gonna lock the gameplay icon gameplay layer and I'm going to unlock the background layer and select the background layer. And what I want to do is around the level, drag this bullet out of the way first, actually. Drag this bullet out of the way. Okay, around the level, I'm going to create just a box. It's sort of like a wall, a wall surrounding the level. So I'm going to go to uh, right click somewhere on the screen, insert new object, sprite, insert a sprite, and just click somewhere around the edge. And I'm going to just draw a little box. Just draw a little box. Doesn't matter how big it is. And just close it down. And I'm going to call this box wall. Right, right click the sprite 3, rename it as the wall. And I'm going to, oh, it's a little bit big, double click it again and click the crop transparent edges icon. So with the wall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this around the outside of the level. Okay, drag the wall so it's on the outside of the level and I'm going to press control hold down control and drag it so you're um, creating a copy of it on the right okay and then just drag another one on oh it's now so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller drag one across the bottom drag one across the bottom and drag one across the top. Pre hold down control and drag to create a copy. Okay, so now I have a wall around the four edges of the screen. And click, you can just click on any one of them and make sure that you also add another behavior. Actually, click on the wall object here and add a behavior um, add new and make it a solid make it a solid so objects cannot move or fall through it make it a solid so what that means is when the rock hits the wall it shouldn't move through it let's just have a look oh it's moved through it anyway oh well okay so now what I want to do is go to the event sheet and I want to add a couple of events. All right, the first thing I want to add is when the bullet collides with the wall. So when the sprite collides, so go to on collision with another object. When it collides with the wall, 
Uh, destroy the destroy the bullet. So where is destroy? Here under miscellaneous. And I want to add another event. And when the meteoroid collides, all right. When the meteoroid collides with the wall. When the meteoroid collides with the wall, I want it to bounce. So go to the meteoroid object and choose bounce, bounce, bounce off the wall. Okay, so when the, oh, what's going on? I think I might have selected the wrong thing. When the meteoroid collides with the wall, the meteoroid is going to bounce uh, off the wall. Wait. Yeah, that might be right. So let's run this, see what happens. So the meteoroid is bouncing back and forth. Which is okay, but it's not really realistic because every time you run the game right it's gonna just bounce horizontally right it's just gonna bounce horizontally so uh, what I want to do is I want to give it a random direction so I'm now going to add event and I'm gonna go to system and I'm going to go to start of level, start of layout. So where is that? Where is that? Start of layout. Mm. On the start of layout. Okay, which means I should probably drag this to the top. So how do you move this around? Drag this little line to go to the top okay so because it's happening at the beginning might as well make it go to the top and go to add action and I'm going to go to meteoroid and set the angle of the motion of the meteoroid and change it to random bracket 360 so if you're not familiar with functions Basically, a function is just uh, an instruction for doing something, for generating something. So the random function, what it does is it generates an angle between 0 and whatever number you give it as input. So it's going to generate a random angle between 0 and 360. So go done. And then if you run the game, at the start of it, the meteoroid should move in a different direction every time. Okay, so this is getting a bit long, so I'm going to wait till the next tutorial before showing you guys anything else. Okay, thanks for watching guys. See you next time.